right? So we're going to end this bad boy at 8.10. How about that? 8.10. You guys ready? And we did 8.10 because we have a, uh, a huge, huge outreach event tomorrow. And uh, we have our family thrill night. I got to be on radio today, talk more about it. And this thing is spreading like wildfire all over our city. Everyone has heard about family thrill night. And uh, we're expecting uh, a couple thousand people here tomorrow. And it's a great opportunity for us to show them the love of God. It's a great opportunity for us to uh, show them Jesus. But you know what? It's not through all the cool stuff we're going to have here. Even though we're going to do some really cool stuff, have some great shows. We're going to do some really awesome things. But you know what's going to be more awesomer? <laughs> Is you showing up and showing your love for one another. Because nothing says Jesus than how we serve each other, how we love each other, how we give to each other. That says Jesus to people. And uh, we have strategized. Last night, we had this place full of volunteers. And they were given the strategy for tomorrow. So if you haven't signed up to volunteer, hey, remember, it's never too late. Look at the person sitting next to you and say, it's not too late to volunteer. Say it again. If you don't serve, you swerve. Say it again. If you don't serve, you swerve. Listen, when you're not committed, you're just a little bouncing ball going from place to place to place to place. And it's just, it's just no, no, no roots. And there's no growth in that. There's no change in that. And so what an opportunity as Elevate Church that we get to experience Jesus in our city in a very precious way. And so we'll be praying for that as well. But first, I want to go ahead and set us up with a message because I need to encourage us. Is that okay? Yes. Everybody say this. Say, steps beyond a moment. Yes. The title of my message of 20 minutes tonight <laughs> is uh, <laughs> Steps. Let's see if we can do this. Steps beyond a moment. See, because right now all of us are facing a moment. And whether it's a favorable moment, like, man, you're, you're about to get that phone call for that raise or that phone call for that new job, or you're about to get that phone call for that amazing breakthrough that you've been standing and believing for. And then some of us are in a moment of despair, moment of discouragement, moment of this, and you finish the sentence, right? We're all in different moments. Everyone sitting in these chairs, we're all in a different moment of our life. But how many know that God is not moved by our moments? Whether they're good or bad. Like to God, it's like, hey, it, it, it doesn't, if you're blessed, it's because I'm blessing you. If you're in a challenge, don't worry about it. I'm in the challenge with you. And so that's the good news about God. So I want you to say this to me. Say God moment. So real quickly, let's just think about God moments of people in the Bible. When you read the book of 2 Kings, and I can't go there because I got 20 minutes. Uh, you see Elijah. Elijah was the prophet of God. He was, he was in a moment. He was in a moment of running from his enemy. The enemy was chasing. There was a king, a wicked king that wanted the prophet to come and serve him. But God didn't give him permission to serve him. God said, I need you to go somewhere else where I need you for a different moment. And so now they're in this like valley and they're surrounded by mountains. And as Elijah is standing there with his assistant, his servant, the armies of the enemy are now surrounding them all at the peak of this mountain. And Elijah was kind of like, and wasn't moved. The assistant was like, are you crazy? Like, we're about to die. Should we just surrender? I, just imagine, have you ever been in a situation that's been very crisis-like or a very challenging, and you're just like, you don't know how to manage that moment, and you start freaking out. You kind of lose patience. You kind of lose focus because you're so afraid. Have you ever been in that situation? I've been in that situation. Oh, yeah. I'll never forget when my son was choking. He was choking. He had some food uh, that got clogged up in his throat. And everybody was freaking out. My wife was freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. But I had to, I had to keep calm in the moment. I grabbed him and I did the, uh, what's that thing called? Exactly. See how I engage with you? I, we preach together. The, the Heimlich, the what? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and, and I just, I just, I, I went boom, nothing. And then boom, and then it, it, 
it all came out. It was, it was amazing. I remember another moment when I, I've done like three Heimlich maneuvers on three different people in my life. One of them, she was already blue, and nobody saw her. And, uh, man, I tell you, she's just like, but she's not even screaming because obviously she can't and did the same thing, and boom. But it's what do you do in that moment? So Elijah's not being moved by the moment, but his assistant is moved by the moment. He's challenged by the moment. He's scared in the moment. He's, he's ready to surrender in the moment to whatever he was facing. But you know what Elijah did? Elijah prayed that God would give him a God moment. See, God wants to switch your moments, regardless of what you're facing. And so God prayed, and he said, he said Father, open his eyes. And you know what happens? The assistant's eyes were open, and then all of a sudden, the assistant starts looking around. And Elijah's like, do you see? And sure enough, regardless of, of, of them being surrounded, he no longer saw the surrounding of the enemy. He now saw the surrounding of the angels of the Lord surrounding the enemy. God can give you that kind of moment. God can give you that kind of moment. So there's another person, Moses. Remember when he had his God moment? He's running with the children of Israel. I mean, isn't it encouraging that we're not the only ones that go through stuff? Doesn't it seem like the children of Israel and the people of God were always going through something but God? Moses is running with the children of Israel. They're coming out of bondage, 400 plus years of slavery, and now they're free. And, of course, we know that they're not at the Red Sea, and now it just seems like, man, there's, there's no way out of this. There's no beyond this. And, of course, we know that God parts the Red Seas. They cross through, and then God floods and completely immerses the enemy under. And that was an amazing moment. How about this God moment? Remember Daniel? Remember Daniel was being made along with his, his other friends, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego? Remember when this King Nebuchadnezzar uh, was deceived by his own leadership and said, hey, king, how about we build a big God, a big idol? And when the trumpet sounds, everybody has to bow down and worship this God who was referencing to him. And he said, okay, let's, that sounds cool. Let's try that. Let's do it. And Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, they all refused. They refused to bow down to that moment of their life. And what happens? Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego get thrown into the, the fiery furnace, the fire. But remember the God moment? The God moment was not only was Daniel there, but the king was there. And they said, hey, didn't we throw three guys in there? And they're like, uh, yeah, we threw three. And Daniel saw the moment. He said, then why is there four and the fourth one looks like the son of God? You see, every single moment God wants to take us beyond that moment God wants us to see something greater in the midst of whatever moment you are facing I remember when I first started this church um, I had my moment of I said to myself okay what kind of preacher do I want to be and I said I want to be an informational preacher you know what because I, I realized that here in Santa Clarita or New Hall specifically you know everybody's just so poor-minded you know you don't have to be you know, financially broke to be poor. You can be spiritually broke. But we had both, spiritually broke and, phys and physically broke. Everybody was broke. So I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to be informational. I'm going to teach people how to come out of broke. I'm going to teach people how to believe God, how to stretch, how to, how, to, how to begin to apply the word and use it as a tool to better their life, how to get uh, promotions. How to st and I started going informational. And then I got old. Right? You just start informational. And then I said, okay, I want to be informational, but I also want to be inspirational. So then I hit another moment. I got inspired more people now. And I'm in the moment of inspiration, and everyone's inspired. But I'm like, okay, information, inspiration. I'm like, it's not enough. But nine years later, I don't just want to be informational. I don't want to just be inspirational. I want to be transformational. Come on, that's the moment where I'm saying, you know, God, I'm so sick of just wanting to throw out information. I'm so tired of just trying to be inspiration. I want to be the person that says and that's heard people say that church will transform your life. That's a moment. See, and that can be you right now. You just got a bunch of head knowledge, information, information. That's all you want, information, information. Or you just want inspiration, inspiration, inspiration. God's like, hey, how about 
link up with me and we can have some transformational moments change come on deliverance that's what god wants to do and so and of course you know now i look at myself and i'm like okay mauricio but i had to go beyond beyond the walls i had to go beyond the limitations i had to go beyond because how many know that anytime that you want to go beyond anytime you want to take steps beyond your moment how many know that that that, that takes work that takes dedication. That takes discipline. That takes commitment. That takes expectation. That takes focus. And if you don't have that, I'm telling you, you'll never go beyond your feelings. You'll never go beyond what you're seeing. You'll never go beyond what you have right now. You'll just stay there. And God doesn't want us to just live in our moment. God wants us to go from moments to moments to moments, but with him. Let's look at a story real quick. Joshua 6, chapter 1 through 5. It says this. This is the perfect example. The walls. Come on, they had a moment. And they're looking at big walls. It says, and the gates of Jericho were shut tight. Everybody say, shut tight. So let's say it this way. The doors of Jericho were shut tight. And guarded closely because of the Israelites. Have you ever had a door closed on you so tight just because of you? Have you ever felt like the enemy has just shut every door of healing, door of breakthrough, door of restoration, door of joy, door of happiness, door of, you know, the next level, the, the, the next season of your life? Have you ever just felt like, man, doors are just shut tight? And it's all because of the Israelites. See, if you don't recognize in your moment, okay, right now I'm seeing some, some lack, I'm seeing some pushback, it definitely is because of me. But that's a good thing because then obviously you must be doing something right if doors are closing on you. I know you don't like hearing that, but if doors are closing on you, how many here believe that God loves it when doors close? You know, let me tell you why God loves it. Because then you have to come to the place where you bow down to the one who can open every door. Let's, let's keep reading. So no one went out. No one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, I have handed Jericho over to you. Okay, the doors are shut. They're tight. No one coming in, no one going out. Yet God says, but I've given it to you. How can, how can God have the audacity to tell me that he has given me something that has been shut? I'll tell you why, because he's God. I've also handed over to you its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all your fighting men. Everybody say, step. He's like, I want you to march. I want you to step and st I want you to do all kinds of steps around this city. I want you to march around this city. March around the city once with all your fight. In fact, do it for six days. Have seven priests get trumpets made out of ram's horns. They must carry them in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times. Tell the priests to blow the trumpets as you march. You will hear them blow a long blast on the trumpets. And when you do, tell the whole army to give a loud what? Did God tell them, uh, make sure you push in through the doors as hard as you can. Break the door down on the seventh day. Kick the door in on the seventh day. Blow up the door on the seventh day. What did he say to do? See? Many of us, we want, we want this spiritual breakthrough where we're not willing to give that spiritual shout. You know what bothers me a lot? I've been, I'm going to be honest with you, straight up. I'm going to keep it real. It bothers me when I walk into church, any church. Now, I'm not, I'm not hating on you. I'm just saying. When you see people that God has delivered from the most craziest situations, and they won't worship God. It pisses me off. I'm like, I know your story, and you have the audacity not to express, not to shout, not to worship. Have you forgotten the moment where he delivered you out of the darkest place of your life. Now I know that that the that the the, the pushback is going to be like, well, everyone has their own style of worship. I got that, yes. But have you ever had a shout? Okay, 
Do your style. Do your fashion of worship. But is there ever a shout? Because so often we can be struggling emotionally, struggling with frustration. We're doing all the work. But notice in this story, they didn't do all the work. All they did was do the steps of the steps of a righteous man of God will what? Will prevail. Steps and then a shout. So our our worship avenges the enemy. Our worship shuts the mouth of the lion. Look at every story. All those men started, the first thing they did, it, you, Moses wasn't trying to slap the water. To, no, he first started with worshiping God, calling on God, and then God did the rest. Are you here today? Yes. Now, I'm not trying to hate on anybody here. If you feel that way, well, then that's your conviction. <laughs> so, uh, uh, where are we at? So when, when you do tell the whole army to give you a loud shout and the wall of the city will fall down to give a loud what? Shout. And then what's going to happen after that? The walls go down. Have you ever, have you ever just, let's take your spiritual out of it. Have you ever been in a place, you're at a game and you hear everybody shout, you're just like, man, that sounds awesome. Whew. It's not even spiritual, man. It's football. It's baseball. And you're just like, ah. There's freedom in a shout. Like something happens on, when there's a shout, there's like this boost of energy. Imagine when you shout to the one who's the way maker. Just imagine. Then the whole army will march up to the city and everyone, say, say this to me, everyone. everyone. Come on, Elevate Church is everyone will go straight in. But I can, I'm, I'm sure I can hear the Israelites whispering among themselves, the walls are too tall. There's no way we can get in. They're too strong for us. It must mean we should probably just leave this one. God, we thank you that there's a promise behind those walls. Thank you that there's something cool that you have beyond those walls. But it's too big. They're too strong. They're too smart. I'm uneducated. I'm not prepared. I don't have what it takes. And so often we can be that person where we just keep living with this limitation and never seeing beyond what God has on the other side. Are you hearing me? Talk about closed doors. Each day the Israelites were marching quietly. They were supposed to just be like, that must have been awkward, huh, quiet? Just like They couldn't talk. So just march and don't talk. I'm sure God did that on purpose so that there'd be no complaining. Because when we're taking steps, we talking. Oh, my God. Gosh, when is it going to be done? Said, Don't worry. I'm almost done. <laughs> but Joshua just told them what to do every single day. They'd go right back to camp. And he said, don't forget, we're going back tomorrow. And you're going to just walk. And mind you, one day, two days, three, four, five, six days the gates were still tightly shut. Nothing changed. The second day, the walls were still enormous, and they were tall. The third day, the fortifications were still solidly plagued like nothing. The soldiers were still on the walls, mocking them, telling them, you losers. Y'all look stupid praying. Y'all look stupid walking around. The enemy was just speaking down to them. I mean, think about it. Have you ever had a door closed on you? Think about that. A, pro a door of promotion? Have you ever had a door of healing closed for you? Just been waiting? A door of your family getting better? A door of emotional health? A door of vision and purpose? Like, I'll tell you, it's almost like in these days, more and more people are discouraged in the body of Christ. Just numb, just like nothing, just nothing's good anymore. Like nothing. There's nothing. The word's not enough. It's not enough. And uh, when I think about this, I, I, I can just think about, remember when Jesus was raised from the dead and uh, the disciples, while he was in, in the tomb, they were, they were in hiding. And there's a, a particular part of the story, and you can find that in, in the Gospels and all, pretty much all of them. They were, they were in the house, and the Bible says, and they locked the door. And they were locked in that door because they said, man, we saw what happened to Jesus. And I think 
many times we don't like to go beyond because we have seen what's happened to other people and we don't want that to happen to us. So we fail to try. Because what if it didn't work for them, man, they're, 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 my, they're my model. And they're hiding and they're afraid and they're scared and they're no longer willing to go beyond their four walls of the house anymore. Why? They were just like, I, we don't want, we don't want the same thing that happened to Jesus to happen to us. And so the story says this. It says that Jesus was raised from the dead, and then he went directly to their house. And I'm sure he probably went and just put your fist out like a door. That's a doorknob. He's like, okay, it's locked, okay. I'm sure then he started knocking, you know, cluck, 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 cluck. And I'm sure the disciples are like, hey, do you all hear that? I don't hear that. Do anybody hear anything? I don't hear nothing, right? Nobody wants to go beyond the moment. And so nobody opened the door. And the Bible says it this way. It says, and then the Lord appeared to them. Think about this. He never opened the door. You know what that tells me? That Jesus is the door. <laughs> He's the door. And if Jesus doesn't need to open doors, that's because he is the door. That's why he is the way, the truth, and the what? Life. So that means that he is the door for anything we need right now. You may need a door for this healing, this door, but Jesus is the door to healing. Jesus is the door to provision. Jesus is the door to joy. Jesus is the door to advancement. Jesus is the door to progress. Jesus is, is the door to your emotional health. Jesus is the door. So Jesus is like, man, I don't need a door. I am the door. I'm the door. He is the door of favor. He is the door of blessing. He is the door of joy. He is the door of victory. He is the door of whatever it is you need. He said, I am. As a matter of fact, listen, read Revelations. He says, I'm the door. So if you go back to the story, now you wonder why in this walls of Jericho, uh, God never told them, and on the seventh day, open the door. God's like, y'all don't need to touch nothing. You just follow my steps, obey, obey me throughout the steps, and on the seventh day, you just give me a big shout like I already opened the doors. And they shouted, and the walls came down. Isn't that amazing? Ever say, he's the door. Come on, you got to think, guys, there's something beyond these walls. There's something beyond the limitation there's something when I think, like, for example, I think of family throw night. I think these have been some, this week again, I heard that, you know, I'm on the board of, 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 an, of an organization, and the board received letters of people talking crap about family throw night because they knew that I was on the board. I'm like, like you little devil, you, like, these people, he's like, these people got nothing to do but write letters. I'm like, I have seen beyond the door. I've seen beyond the walls. See, you have to look at whatever it is that God has given you and see beyond it right now. Maybe things aren't as great in business. Maybe things aren't as great in your family, but you have to see beyond. Maybe your child's cray cray. Maybe, maybe your health is like out of whack, but you have to see beyond that moment. You have to see, and maybe things are great. Maybe, maybe everything's come together. Like, man, you're just like, man, it's too good to be true. Like, man, I, I, like, I was talking to Frank Viewer this week. He's like, Pastor's like, I'm, I'm scared. I'm like, what's wrong with you, man? He's like, everything just seems like we're just, we're good. He's like, something's got to be wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm like, what, what do you mean something's got to be wrong? He's like, what? He's like, we're good. I'm like, well, praise God, we're good. <laughs> Hallelujah. But sometimes even we will trick ourselves and say, this is too good to be true. And that becomes your moment of limitation. It's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. There's no way I can be this happy. Like, wow, I don't even, I shouldn't be happy. My family's cray cray. Man, things aren't well. But I, and we get stuck in the moment and not know that beyond, and let me tell you something, beyond the walls of Jericho was not just for the children of Israel. It was for their children and their children. Children, they 
where God was wanting to give not only them, but an entire generation. Think about it. Beyond the walls, beyond the door is people that you need to meet. It's divine appointments that God wants to give you. It's divine victories and breakthroughs that God has for you. Beyond the walls, beyond the door, are people that need to come to Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, we're going beyond the walls. People will come to Jesus tomorrow, with you or without you. But I say, man, let's be God's army. And let's say, man, I'm in this. I'm in this because it's not just about me. I'm going beyond the walls. With, it says everyone will go in. Isn't it amazing how not everyone's always in? Like you got, normally in churches, it's like only like maybe 30% of people serve, 3% of people tithe. But not everyone's always in. And then we wonder, why? Why aren't we blessed? Why aren't we taking our city? Because God demanded, God commanded that everyone will go in. If I'm blessed, you're blessed. If I hurt, you hurt. If I cry, you cry. But together, we're going beyond. That's what God is saying to us tonight. Are you hearing me? Okay, a few more minutes, I'm done. Everybody say this, beyond the walls. Okay, that's what we want to do. Okay, everyone has sight, but most like insight. Just chew on that. Everybody sees their mom and like, oh, every, everyone has sight. But, I, but listen, but most don't have insight from heaven. You have to be able to look at the moment and let God give you insight of that moment. Let God reveal something to you. God wants to give you strategy. If you weren't here Sunday, get Go listen. I'll probably say get the CD. Uh, go listen. <laughs> get the tape, praise God. <laughs> yes. And then rewind it when you're done and hear it again. No, but you have to go back and listen to it because I said that there's, there's, there's three things that God does. He's, he's a God of strategy. He's a God of detail. Anybody remember the third one? God bless all of you. He's, he's, he's mathematical. We have to get insight of the strategy, the details, and then God knows the math. And his math always adds up. Aren't you glad for that? And so as we're just leaving here now, God is saying, hey, uh, you're going to walk through me, the door, the door of blessing, the door of favor, the door of joy, the door of strategy, the door of wisdom, the door of counsel the door of the right relationships, 